Hello and welcome back to Folk in Politics. I'm Calvin Chapman, your host. Today we're going to be discussing the EU and the referendum. There is a large amount of information and data that needs to be known about the EU and what's, what's involved in the referendum. The questions that have been posed and the facts for and against are rather complex questions and answers and I don't think anything within these videos could condense it right down to simple one-line uh, sound bites. I have put a new area on my website for the referendum and um, within this I've also started linking to the Treasury Select Committee. The Treasury Select Committee is a parliamentary body that uh, contains both Conservative and Labour as well as one SNP MPs and they investigate questions concerned with Treasury and for this term they've selected a investigation into the costs of the membership of the EU for the UK. They've only undertaken two evidence gathering sessions and already within those four hours of testimony there is a, a huge amount of data that would assist you whether you are for or whether you're against the UK staying in the um, EU. The EU is a massive um, organisation, it's political and it covers 28 countries. So the issues relating to it, the costs associated with it and the benefits associated with it are huge and quite naturally I am not a fan of staying in the EU but I am a fan of being able to disseminate all of the information whether it's pro or um, for, sorry, for or against. All of the links that I'll be discussing in this video and all future events are always has the data down in the description but you can also if you look here go onto my website and I put all of my links on there as well. So the first question is what is the EU? The EU defines itself as the EU is based on the rule of law everything that it does is founded on treaties voluntarily and democratically agreed by all member countries. These binding agreements set out the EU's goal in its many areas of activity. I thought that description um, rather odd because it does seem to go against what we actually know about the EU, which is it's decidedly undemocratic. If you look in the links or especially on my website, you'll see I've set out one typical example, which was the Lisbon Treaty. In 2009, um, Ireland rejected the treaty. They didn't want to take it on and make it law in their country. I believe other countries also did the same. So um, in an astonishing move, the EU simply said that the wrong question had been asked and the question must be redone and on the second go they managed to get the Lisbon Treaty through. In response to the historic and some would say joyous expression of democratic will in Ireland last week, uh, you said yesterday from the chair that it remains our goal to see the Lisbon Treaty enter into force before the elections of next year Provided, provided, provided that you agree to this, I shall resolutely defend these principles in the Council at the end of the week. So you've asked us for a mandate. I would suggest to the House that simply having the mandate of the Conference of Presidents is not enough for this, and that we ought, under Rule 103, which clearly says that Parliament shall decide whether or not to wind up the debate with a resolution, to finish our debate tomorrow with President Barroso with a vote to see whether we should give you that mandate or not, and to see whether members of this so-called democratic chamber are prepared to respect the Irish result and to find out whether no really means no. Thank you. Yeah. And when I say undemocratic, I mean on the first attempt, when the question was correct, 
a total of 53.4% of people in Ireland rejected the Lisbon Treaty. The EU didn't like that, so they simply rerun it, and I'm sure they would have kept rerunning it until the Irish people um, did what they were told, and the Lisbon Treaty was enacted as a consequence. President, nobody else has said it, but I will. Well done, the Irish. And yet... Before the official result was out, there was Mr Barroso holding a press conference in Brussels, looking as shifty and as dishonest as anybody I've ever seen, saying, despite what the rules of the club are, that the treaty is not dead and we continue. Frankly, it was a disgusting display. It was an insult to democracy. It's perfectly clear that the ratifications should stop now and the implementation of the treaty should stop now. And the defining moment for me in this house was we had the French say no, we had the Dutch say no, and then we had the Irish say no, and this Parliament has willfully carried on ignoring the wishes of the people. You just don't get it, do you? No means no. And it's truly, it's truly incredible that 499 members of this house voted to ignore the Irish no vote and to continue with the treaty. What kind of a parliament is this? If you believed in democracy, you would not just bulldoze aside those three referendum results. I would also direct you to um, a wonderful video, which is Nigel uh, Farage, obviously, um, having a discussion in the EU about the democracy of the EU and the links down in the description. I, I do, regardless whether you're for or against or are indifferent or are seeking answers, I do recommend you go and watch the video because Nigel in action is something to see. So the question uh, remains, what is the Lisbon Treaty? It's the current um, amendment under which the EU works and it was an extremely important change to the structure and makeup of the EU. The definition, and again the links in the description, the definition is the Treaty of Lisbon, initially known as the Reform Treaty, is an international agreement which amends the two treaties which form the constitutional basis of the European Union. The Treaty of Lisbon was signed by the EU member states on 13th of December 2007 and entered into force on 1st of December 2009. So you have to ask the question, why is the Lisbon Treaty so important, especially when we're looking at the question of the UK's role in the EU going forward? The Lisbon Treaty was a substantial change to the rules as far as the constitution of the EU and therefore how the EU is made up and how it operates. Of specific importance to people in UKIP and people in the Leave camp is Article 49A which was created in the treaty. This article requires the EU to negotiate a trade agreement with any country, member country, that leads the EU. Those who want to vote stay in the EU will tell us the horror stories of if we leave, uh, we're going to lose all the trade, we're going to lose millions of pounds worth of, uh, millions and millions of pounds worth of trade with the EU. We're not going to be able to um, work with anybody in the EU. We're going to lose all of our car imports and exports and the country will be bankrupt. And that just isn't true. The EU, under the Lisbon Treaty, Article 49A, specifically requires that a trade treaty is agreed before that member country leaves. So in 2017, if the UK votes to leave the EU, the EU must agree a trade agreement with us. I think one of the more recent um, issues surrounding this area is one of the former EU um, employees who now is negotiating the TTIP agreement between the US and the EU, he said that the current incumbent government in the United States 
would not want to agree a separate um, trade agreement with the UK. Um, number one, he would say that he used to work for the EU. And number two, the uh, Obama administration is leaving office very shortly and whoever comes in next may have a very big different opinion as to whether there will be a trade agreement signed. 